Okay, so today I'm going to talk about handing in your EPQ. Um, you will have probably, hopefully, spent weeks, months, if not a year or more working on your EPQ. That will have involved hopefully a fair bit of planning um, and looking at dates and when you're going to get things done. You'll have actually then done these things, whether that's an artifact where you've built something or produced something or, or, or put on a performance, or it's an essay where you've done lots of research and had to do lots of reading and write the essay, at least 5,000 words. And so it's a long old process. Um, and you get to the end and, you, and you've done it. You've, you've made your artifact, you've done your performance, you've written your essay, you've done your presentation as well, you've answered the questions on it. Um, um, and you've done all your your summary reflections. See my other videos for all of those things. Um, and so I get that once that's all done, you just kind of want to hand it in. You want to get it all done, um, hand it over and, and get it marked uh, and hopefully get your, your decent grade back. And I think that actually sometimes this leads to issues and some people don't give the hand in um, as much notice and attention as they should um, and hopefully I'm going to highlight that to you today and show you talk you through what you should be doing what attention you should be paying and why actually it's quite important so to begin with actually your hand in the thing that and, and ultimately this could be an external moderator so this external moderator unlike your teachers your supervisors they don't know you they don't know anything about you they don't know anything about your project the first impression they get of you is what they get in their hands uh, and that's what you've handed in. And so if that is incomplete, if there are things not done that should be, dates in the wrong order, um, signatures missing, no student number, things like that, that is just going to set a really, really bad first impression. On the other hand, if you hand in something that is really well bound, is in a good order, all the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, signatures are done, that actually puts the moderator in a good you know it gives a good first impression for you for one and it should put their mindset um positive it should give them a positive mindset and a positive first impression of you and actually you know they shouldn't they should be objective they shouldn't let that influence their marks and things like that but i think it's hard not to if i received a bit of work and it's all crumpled and in the wrong order and not not well bound and not not followed the guidelines then that's going to, whether I want it to or not, that's going to negatively impact me when I, when I come to assess it. So actually, it could have a difference. It shouldn't do, but it could have a difference um, on one grade or another, depending on how well and how much attention you've paid to the hand in. So that's why I thought it was important to, to make this video and go through actually some of the things to, to watch out for and some of the things that can help you make a really good first impression um, when it gets to external moderation, if yours is one of the ones that gets called um, for that. So a couple of things to begin with. Um, first, I often get asked what order should things be handed in in? Um, and again, this is not necessarily hard and fast. This isn't a definite thing, but this kind of makes logical sense. So the first thing you should be given, I think that is um, in the guidelines, is you need to give your production login. So that's either the form that you've downloaded and been working on from um, AQA, um, and you've either there's less of it, but you still can handwritten it, um, or you've probably downloaded a, a document, a, a Microsoft uh, Office doc or a Google doc, um, and you've been typing it straight into there. Or if you're lucky, your school may have Project Q, um, and that kind of does lots of the hard work for you, as I'll, I'll go into in a moment. So but whatever that is, and you'll download it from Project Q, that's the first thing that should go. And that's got all the candidate record forms, um, all of the signatures that I'm going to be speaking about in a moment. That comes first. After that, you then put your product. So product is the word that AQA use for your, your EPQ. That is in, in lots of cases, is an essay. So your essay would then come next. Or it's an artifact um, or evidence of the artifact. So if you've done a performance, you can give, you can hand in a um, like a USB stick with uh, a video recording of your artifact on. If you've done something like made a motorbike or a model plane, it might be a video of you, you using that. It can be in picture form as well. So some sort of evidence of your product, um, whether that's necessary or an artifact, should be in there. And if you have done an artifact, your your um, portfolio, your, your brief that you should have done alongside it, around a thousand to two thousand word essay, that then comes after your pictures and your, your evidence of, of whatever your artifact is. After that, there should be some more evidence, if you've got it, of your presentation. So there's evidence of your presentation within your production log, the 
uh, presentation record part A and part B. But if you've used slides, they can go in there. If you've done a poster, a picture of that poster can go in there or the actual poster if it's not too big. And um, that goes in there as evidence as well. And then the last thing is any supplementary documents, any additional documentation. So if you've produced uh, an essay plan or a timeline or a Gantt chart or, or um, you've done a learning log or something like that, or you did the um, future learn course and there's the screenshot a certificate of that, that kind of goes at the back. So if you think about it in four parts, first, there's your production log. So that's either what you've downloaded or your project queue. Those documents go first, then your product, then some evidence for your presentation, and then the other things. So that's a good order to put things in. Um, when we're talking about the production log or your project queue, your name and your student number appears on every page. So if you have if you're handwriting, you've obviously then got to handwrite that at the top of every page. That's going to take you a bit of time. Fewer and fewer people are handwriting now. I think if you're typing, if it's a uh, Microsoft Word document, then it's a header. So if you put it in the first one, it should then repeat it on all the others. So if your, your student number and your name should then repeat. If you're on Project Q, you just need to make sure your profile shows your name. And again, it's things like, you know, I've had students hand in projects before and it's lowercase um, letters for their for their first name and their surname, it just creates a bad first impression. So make sure everything's right. Make sure your student number's right. That's quite important. But also, you know, your name should be a capital. It shouldn't be, you know, it's an EPQ. Generally, sick form is doing this. You shouldn't need to be told that, but that, that kind of comes part of it. Um, and if you put it on Project Q, once you've downloaded your production log, it should then um, put it at the top of every page. So that saves you a lot, a lot of time, uh, especially compared to, to writing it. Something else that's quite important. So this production log, um, AQA do really want to see it. Remember, you're, what you're doing here is a research project and you need to show a plan. You need to show progress and development. Um, and your essay or your artifact in itself should show a bit of that. But actually, your production log is really important in showing the journey that you've made and any um, any change of direction or if you change your title, your justifications of it. It should show a journey from start planning, thinking, you might have had lots of different ideas, then narrowing down and then right to the end. So the production log, actually, you you shouldn't underestimate how important it is. Following on from that, the dates then should be in chronological order because that will show if you are externally moderated, that will show the moderator that you have been on that journey where it literally where it started in terms of the date. And then actually, you know, you had your record initial ideas, then your planning review, then your mid project review. They should be you know, your mid-project review should be after your planning review. Your planning review should be after your record initial ideas. If those dates are all the same date, that will, um, that's not good because that suggests that you, you did it all after the time and that's not what they want to see. They want to see this progression over time. So that's something to be aware of. And again, people miss. So double check your dates um, are in chronological order. They come after each other and it shows a progress. It shows a flow from start to finish. That's something to, to be aware of. And then when you do hand it in, um, again, I've had lots of projects, hundreds of projects handed in over the years um, in all different forms. Um, please don't put your each sheet in a separate um, plastic wallet. I know it might look good, but actually that's really um, annoying because your supervisors first have to moderate it. It has to be internally moderated and then it goes to the external moderator. So potentially there are a fair few people, three people needing to write on it. They're not going to be wanting to take acetate, uh, sorry, sheet paper out of um, acetate folders time and time again. So don't put it in um, plastic wallets. Um, again, a folder, it's more difficult. We've got to post these off quite often. So we probably don't even want it in a ring binder. The best way to hand it in is actually in treasury tags because that keeps things nice and light, keeps it all together. Again, it should be in that order that I said before. Um, and treasury tags then allow it to be passed between people for marking and moderation. That's how, that's the, that's the preferred method. Um, I know some people do want to bind it and that's absolutely fine if you bind it. That's not an issue and that, and that can still be handed across. But just be mindful of the fact that, again, the, these might need to be um, handed between people posted out um, so if you are binding again just keep 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 it as light as possible um, and uh, yeah al allowing access for moderators uh, essentially um, yeah so I mentioned signatures before so I've already mentioned dates 
um, and keeping them in chronological order. The other thing, and this is quite significant, is you need to make sure that you've signed where you need to. Um, so for you as a, as a student, your signatures, you need to sign uh, the candidate record form. That's the very first page on your um, production log. So the thing that you download from Project Q or the thing that you've, you've downloaded from the AQA website, you need to sign and date that. That can be at the end. So the, the date, you can put the date that you sign it because it, it's understood that you would probably be doing that last. Um, you would then need to get your supervisor to sign that as well. So that's the first page that you see and you will see that there's your uh, centre number, your centre name, uh, candidate number, candidate now. I'll go through all of this in a moment. But yeah, at the bottom, you do need to, um, to have the signature. The next bit you would need to sign um, as a student is the candidate proposal part A. And then as I've got on your uh, supervisor there, your supervisor then needs to sign candidate proposal part B. And then the centre coordinator should be signing part C. So there's kind of three signatures needed there, one from you, one from your supervisor, one from the centre coordinator in the part A, B and C. Then, as a student, you need to sign your um, uh, project product review. Um, and that should be, I think, double check, that should be about it for you uh, as a student. I think at the moment, um, it's got you signing your... Um, yeah, sorry, that is it as a student. Then for the, your supervisor, your supervisor then needs to sign the uh, presentation record. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, presentation record part B. Um, so that's after they've seen you present uh, and they're signing off to say that, that that's an accurate representation uh, of what you've said. Um, and then actually last, and you wouldn't see this, so when you hand in, actually, maybe I shouldn't have included this, but when you hand in, you won't see the record of marks. Now, again, I'll come to that in a moment. Um, but once your supervisor has marked it, it's been internally moderated, they can then sign that. So that's just something for your supervisor. But you probably won't see that um, until um, you, you potentially get your product project back at the end so yeah going through page by page this might be quite handy so you you know what each page should look like and uh, um and what what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing on each of them so for that first page on your uh, production log so the center number uh and candidate number and center name and candidate name you need to put all those in there again if you're handwriting there's a fair bit to do just make sure you're putting the right things in the right places if you're typing again you'd need that but if you're using project q that should go straight in there you then get down to the candidate declaration in most cases i think 95 percent of cases that i've seen the answer should be no to that have you received helpful information from anyone other than subject teachers to produce your work um, and generally that's a no, because if you've used experts, if you used other people, normally you've referenced them within your work somewhere else. So actually it's it you haven't used additional people. And again, that second box there generally should be blank. blank. It says, please list below any books, leaflets or other material, DVDs, etc. used to complete this project, not acknowledged in the work itself. So normally you people have used uh, leaflets books dvds etc but you've you've referenced it so really those two other boxes under the candidate declaration are a chance for you to put last minute things in that you may have missed you may have forgot that you've used um, and you're you're giving the moderator um indication there that oh, okay actually i did use this and look here's where i've used them but in most cases that those are blank because you you haven't used those um, it then goes down and i said it's your signature uh, and date and then your supervisor's signature and date and they're normally the last ones that go in other than as i said your record of marks when you hand that in that that th those dates can be later should be later than your record initial ideas so when i say the dates are in chronological order i mean of when you completed um, the pages uh, the next page then is your submission checklist and here you, sh you should be able to tick all four of the boxes um, at the bottom. So you're saying that you've signed and completed a candidate record form. The research is a written based report. Um, if the project is an artifact or a production, a company and research based report is also required. So everyone should have done a written report. Evidence of your project products. So again, it's either your essay or video or you've got a digital copy of it somehow and evidence of presentation. And again, you've got that in your um, presentation record part a and b and you might have included slides as well so that bottom box you should be basically the moderator is going to be looking at that you should have ticked all four and if you haven't ticked one of those it means you haven't submitted an epq you haven't submitted what you need to um so all of those at the bottom go sorry i jumped to the bottom there at the top your checklist so it says um 
your working title and your final title. For the majority of cases, they will be different. The, the first title that you had, your first working title, is very, very often different to what you end up with. So you need both titles in there. Sometimes they've stayed the same, but, but the majority of the time they're different. And you might need to look back at your, um, maybe the, the record of initial ideas for your working title and then your mid-project review for your um, final title. Um, and then you need, either need to tick the top one or cross the top one if it's a written report, if it's an essay, that's the top one. Or uh, if it's an artifact, you, you tick the next one and you put um, what your title of your, your artifact was. The next one down is only if it's a group project. And again, I've seen very, very few group projects. So most people are, are no on that one. We come to the next page then, and it's your taught skills. I think your supervisor um, has to complete this one. And quite often they can just show the scheme of work. You will have had taught skills, referencing, research, time management, um, looking at Gantt charts, lots of different things. Um, you, you will have had presentations. You will have had um, guidance on, on what to complete, and a, a list of that goes in there. Um, and quite often that's, that's handy. They can normally I give my students a scheme of work that they can then slip in behind um, the taught skills element. Um, we then get on to the next one, that's the record of marks. So as I said, you will hand your project in with that blank because you won't have had the marks yet. What will then happen is your supervisor will moderate, there'll be some internal moderation, and then that internal moderation gets sent away. So you won't see that record of marks for, for form completed. Um, until just before your your center sends it to the to the external moderation there should be some details on there when you do see it of the marks that you've been awarded why you've been awarded them um and then the signature as i said of, of your supervisor will come after that uh we then get to record of initial ideas and all of this i'm not going to talk about that here because i'm talking about the hand in so you should have already done all of that it's just to make sure that you've got your um your signatures and your dates in there completely. What I often see is in the, um, sorry, candidate record part A, um, that's normally complete and absolutely fine and signed and dated, but what is often missing, people forget to put in providing details of courses. That's a really important point because actually AQA, one of the things that they're really interested, really concerned about is dual accreditation. Um, and so they need to know what courses you've studied um, and the exam boards to, to be able to check those over. So please make sure that you've got your, your courses studied in your um, Part A candidate proposal. The Part B, again, should already have been done. Your supervisor should have given you comments and they will sign that. And then your uh, centre coordinator also give you comments, sign and date. Um, and then your mid-project review, sorry, your uh, planning review, your mid-project review, product product review, again, should all be already done. You should have already typed it in there, written it in there in Project Q. Uh, you just need to double check the dates follow on from one another. They should all be done at the same date. Um, and then presentation record part A and B, again, just need to double check your dates and your signatures because by this point when you're handing in it should have already been done uh, and then finally you've got your summary reflection uh, and that should have been done as well so hopefully that's handy for you um yeah my big thing is don't don't just rush to get it hand in actually think about your hand in because that is going to be the first impression you're potentially going to make of the person that's ultimately going to decide um whether your internal moderation mark sticks or might need to be changed um the big thing hopefully i've made that clear is making sure your signatures are where they need to be and the dates are in chronological order um the order of the hand in should be your production log then your product then your presentation and then the other bits and then yeah, binding with treasury tags, it will be um, welcomed by your supervisor and your um, moderator. So best of luck.